Hey guys, what's going on? It's about to be 2018, so this is my first video. Um, I want to I wanna help you guys reach your sales goals, all right? I want to really give you some really good inside information on how you really close deals and um, how to really evaluate your audience, okay? And I don't want to beat around the bush with a bunch of stuff. In this video, I'm going to give you some specific strategic knowledge, all right? Some things that I do, methods that I use that work, all right? So one of those things is creating a vortex. And a lot of people don't know what I mean when I say creating a vortex. And what I mean is, it's the same, um, so look at it like this. If you, um, let's say you are like a girl or like a boy or whatever, or a woman or a man. And if you go after them and they feel sought after, it empowers them. Now they feel because you desire them, they have this kind of instinctive like power over you like they don't need to respond to you because you're always there but when you become scarce and you when you're not always there that's when they say well why aren't you there just like if you if you if there's a pretty girl or, or a good looking guy if you go and give them all this attention you're empowering them you're emboldening them you're with that oh you're you're so beautiful and that's what they're going to that's how they're going to respond to you but if you make them earn the compliment, they appreciate it a lot more. And that's what I mean by creating a vortex. Don't be desperate. And also, we want to be found. We're not searching people out. So we want to get discovered by people so that we're in a position to close with them and to work with them with trust because they have trust with us. OK, so common ground is very important in closing people, but it's not always the necessary thing you need. You just need trust. Right. So how do we get to trust? Well, the first way you get to trust is common ground. With your first client. With your first client, you're going to have to find something that makes them bond with you. But after you do a great job for them, right? The other clients that you get through them will trust you because they trust you. And because they trust them. And because they have common ground with them. So because they're associated with you, you must be okay. That's just how the human mind works. So really, we're looking for our first clients, okay? We're looking for our first client. And we're looking to be in a proper position with our first client. And we can't do that selling desperate and selling broke. We can't do that, okay? It's like fear. People can smell it on you when you're desperate for a sale. Please close with me. Please sign with me. You have to be nonchalant, almost like it. Hey, listen, you can work. Somebody's going to work with me. I got that much belief in myself. I know somebody's going to work with me. So if it isn't you, great. Great that it isn't you, so you're not standing in the spot of the person that's about to come work with me because somebody's coming to work with me. Or I'm going to go get this business and I'm going to talk to people until I find the match that's supposed to be sitting there in that spot that you're not supposed to be in, obviously, because we're not a fit to work together. We can't find common ground, okay? Which is okay. I can't find common ground with everyone I meet. A lot of people that I meet, I can, but not everyone. And so what I'm looking for is the person that I can find common ground with. What does that mean? I'm a veteran. Um, I do martial arts. These are all different things that we can talk about that have nothing to do with roofing, construction, or anything else, but make them know me as a human and as a person. And it kind of gives them a peer into my personality of who I must be because of what I've done and what they've done that's similar and what they know about it. Okay, and what I know about it. That makes them know about me. What they know about me impacts how they treat me, which is important, how they view me, okay? The connections that we have, the bonds that we have, those are things that they need to know about me. I want them to know those things. And how do I find out what those things are? By asking questions. So let's talk about one of the first things that we're doing wrong when we go to the door is... It's our idea of what they want. We're going to like, oh, hey, we want, I want to sell you this. I'm going to sell you this roof and this is what you're going to take. Instead of listening to what they're trying to get done. Because if you can get to the end of where they want to, of what they want to do and it doesn't work, now you just justified everything you want to do. And yeah, it takes a little more work, but guess what? Your position is solidified. OK, so that's why even with the estimates, when I talk about when I created the estimate presentation, why do we do that? Because we just want to get to the end of what they're asking for, which is an estimate. OK, so we want to get to the point where we're the ones they're working with and now they trust us and we can introduce things to them. OK, 
enlighten them, give them more information, and they're willing to accept the information because their defenses are down. Their walls are not up anymore. We appeased them. We gave them the estimate. We've been chopping it up with them. It's worth it. Why? Because you don't have to do that with every client. You only do it with the first one. That's the referral. Everybody else goes with the plan because they listen to the first person that you worked with and they see the result that you got for them. So when you're when I'm talking about all this work, you're like, oh man, that things that seems like a long time. Well, that's with your person that you find common ground with. And guess why you don't mind doing that? Because you actually have something in common to talk about. It's natural, it's organic, it's easy. Okay, you don't mind spending time with them because it's real, it's relevant to you. Okay, so the other people, they might not have anything in common with you. They might not talk your ear off all day. They just, they just know you do a good job because Susie says so. And they know Susie for 20 years. And Susie loves you. Oh, she loves you. Why? Because you got common ground. Her, her son is in the army. You were in the army. Just got out or something. Y'all the same age. You might look like them. It don't matter. You just got to find common ground with somebody who can become your advocate and start to refer you out. Okay, asking questions. That's how you find common ground. We ask questions. What are you trying to get done? What are you trying to see a flag? Are you a veteran? Hey, listen, we ask questions so we can get information, so we can load up our gun, so we can shoot back some. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do that too. I see, that's all we're trying to do is create this dialogue between us and the client and find this energy, that, that, this connection. And once we get that, that's our advocate. They're going to tell everybody, you got to work with Alan. You got to work. They're your advocate. They love you. You remodeled their house. You did a great job. Everything you said was going to happen, it happened. You was there at the job. All of the stuff that you did, that's what they're going to say, okay? So every, every action that you have with your client, think about this is something that they're going to talk about. When I'm talking to them, the way I'm talking to them, uh, how I'm making them feel, one thing is important. People don't always remember what they what you said, but they always remember how you made them feel. Be very conscious about how you're making them feel, okay? Always be conscious about that. Don't be in such a manipulative way. Don't manipulate them, positioning them, boxing them in, cornering them. Make them feel like they can breathe with you. Make them feel like you got this. Make them feel like you got their best interest in mind and have those things have their best interest in mind show that man your referrals will go viral what you're doing it will translate to them they will be like man I gotta tell somebody about this and this is how you get references this is how you get referrals and people that want to talk about you they want to rave about you because it's not common in construction that people would act like that with you Okay, so this is what we're trying to accomplish, guys. Okay, and um, also, um, I want to go back to the vortex and talk about what we're doing by creating a vortex. And really, what we're doing is we're branding. Okay, brands create vortexes. People people work with brands that aren't even good, but just because they say they're good, they work with them. McDonald's, it's not good but it's big so people work with people go there okay brands the bigger it is the better it is that's how americans think okay that's how their brains think so if you have a brand people will call you okay but you have to build a brand so how do you build a brand what is a brand and how do we this is how do we create this vortex and this brand so number one documenting our story documenting our journey um, we need to create videos, upload them for our name or our company name or our brand name on YouTube and Google, which that we tell people to Google. So for instance, Amerigreen Construction, when I first, we first started Amerigreen Construction, we made a bunch of videos, put them all and called all the title Amerigreen Construction, just tags Amerigreen Construction, description Amerigreen Construction. Now, when people Google Amerigreen Construction, they say, you're on Google, yes. For our company name, it's easy to be on Google for your brand, but all they see is a bunch of our stuff there. It's just taking up the whole screen. That in their mind, huge. That's huge. They see our videos got thousands of views. They're huge. That is the perception that we are now, that's the mindset that we are now in with the age of Facebook, okay? With the age of social YouTube, social media marketing. If it's big on there, you're big. 
okay? Because that's how we've always thought watching TV. We're using that same perception. So your brand, first of all, getting testimonials, talking to people, uh, finding common ground, that creates your brand. The people that you, that love you, that give you the testimonials that are on there for your name, for your company name, when you tell people to Google you, they find all this stuff. That's a reality that you created. That's a whole world that you created that you're putting them in. You're just putting people in there. Get in my world. Get in my world. That's your brand, okay? Cre you have to have, it doesn't matter how many how much traffic you drive if you don't drive it to anything and it means that means no matter how many people you talk to if you don't have anything they want okay so when you're driving traffic or talking to people you need to have something to show them you have to have something to drive them to so that they can say yeah i want that I'll confirm so they keep going with you not going getting out of here okay you want them to go with you that's why we need to establish who we are so that People and it, the it's you need to be polarizing with who you are, which is this is me, this is authentically me, and if you don't like it, great, it's not for you, not for you, but it's for somebody. But if it's not about anything, if it's just this broad, no one can connect with it. You there's billions of people in the world. We are on the internet, you know, but. If you just authentically express who you are, somebody can connect with that, all right? No matter how weird it is or whatever it is, somebody can connect with that. I just want you to understand that concept of being authentic. Now, when we are, so, so when we begin to be authentic and really reveal our character, we start to discover flaws. We start to discover that who we really are may need some adjustment. And so we begin to reprogram ourselves and make those adjustments, okay? And that's why you, you if you'll notice sales people who are successful have discipline, training, a lot of training. These discipline and training are like your number your one and two things, man. If you got discipline, you can acquire train knowledge through training. Cause you can pay attention, focus, you can do all that stuff. So the first thing you need to learn is discipline so that you can ha get good training so that you can evolve to what you want to become. All right. I think that's the lesson, man. All right, guys, the first video, we ain't even in 18 yet, but it's going to go down this year, guys. I ain't even playing. We in Florida. We're going to close deals this year. We're about to make a lot of money this year. We're going to set ourselves free, set our families free. We're going to have a new perspective after this season, all right? We're going to have a whole new point of view. We ain't even going to be the same people. That's my goal. What's yours?